What's going on YouTube? I'm Scotch. I'm Sniff. And, and we're, we're Scotch and Sniff. And today we're going to talk about some beginner Scotches that you can try around the 12 year old range that are pretty fantastic. And don't cost an arm and a leg. Hopefully. Hopefully. Alright, so what we have here is the Balvenie 12 year double wood. And it's essentially made of, uh, it's called double wood because it's aged in two different casks. There's the ex bourbon cask that gives it its caramel and its color and uh, a lot of vanilla comes from it. And then there's the second cask, which is the sherry cask, where it gets its spice and its sweetness. So moving on, we've got the Yamazaki 12. Now the Yamazaki is kind of funny because the Japanese market has absolutely exploded. Blown you can, up. You can talk a little more about that. Insane. Because I, you love the Japanese. I love Japanese whiskeys. A lot of these whiskeys, the Suntory Company, um, People might know it from different movies and things like that, but they, they do Yamazaki, Hibiki, Hakushu, um, and even Cheetah Distillery. Wait, is it true that they bought Jim Beam? It is true. So uh, Jim Beam was sold to Suntory, so now they're Beam Suntory. So could this be Jim Beam? Uh, <laughs> no. Um, it's going to be Yamazaki, Jim Beam. They said that they were going to keep their hands out of the Jim Beam uh, kind of like field, so they're just going to stick with, you know, Japan has their Japanese, America has their bourbons and whatnot. And what are some of the more typical notes of the Japanese type of whiskeys? Japanese are gonna be a lot more subtle. They're floral notes, um, the smoke and the peat that they have. Peat is basically like a moss that's burned while the grains are being uh, dried. So it imparts this smoky flavor, but everything's gonna be a lot softer. It's not gonna be aggressive and it's not gonna punch you in the face like it might want to, but it's, it's just uh, an easier going type of uh, Fantastic, whiskey. and is that indicative of just all Japanese whiskeys, or like this Japanese Yamazaki 12? I mean, to me personally, it tastes more like bubble gum. Yeah, well, from some of the Japanese whiskeys that I have tried, um, I'm sure in the ones that you've tried, they've been very soft, and and they are more welcoming and gentle. So yeah, very cool. Uh, next up, we have the Dalmore 12. <clears throat> I think uh, Dalmore is kind of an interesting company because it seems like. When you try all of the Dalmores separately, they all taste like the same yeah. sweet, caramelly, caramel, chocolate. There's no magic per bottle per se, but when you sit down with a flight of Dalmore, I think that's when you really start to pick apart the differences in between each of the bottles, the 12, the 15, the 18. So their brand recognition flavor is very like, oh, that's Dalmore. Oh, it's got caramel and like toffee and treacle, treacle, which is like a, a corn, a rich corn syrup. Um, We'll talk about that as well, all the flavor and the palate. Um, but yes, they all have a very close to their range type thing. So when you get them, just like what Sniff said, as a, as a flight or drinking a bunch of them at the same time, then you can tell the differences and the nuances and uh, the age differences. Fantastic. Last but not least, we what? have- We didn't even talk about the McAllen. Ah, uh, the McAllen, they're bougie. We should totally they... address the McAllen like... before we address my favorite. Oh, 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 okay, go ahead. Okay, so we've got the McAllen over here, which is, yeah, McAllen is the name brand to know. Everybody knows, oh, you've had McAllen, it's fantastic, it's the greatest, it's the greatest. Most of them say McAllen. Yeah, okay, we, all right, if you're watching this for the first time and you're seeing McAllen for the first time, please, please, for the sake of all that is good in the world, do not say Macallan. I had a kid who tried to sell me some Macallan and I literally wanted to take the 17 fine oak and smash him in the face with it, which is pretty terrible, but um, you know, it's pronounced McAllen for a reason. These brands have done a great job of just getting their name out there and making sure that people can recognize them instantaneously. Years and, of history. Yeah, definitely. McAllen is one of the better ones that have done that. Not just because they have tons of free tastings every year, but because they actually go out and make sure people are well aware of their brand name by selling some of the most expensive whiskeys in the world. Um, most of them, almost all McAllen's, I believe all of them, are finished completely in sherry casks. That's just, that's the notes that they're known by. And because they're finished in sherry casks, they buy up all of the greatest sherry casks. They're super expensive because of that. And the flavors are, are pretty much the same or similar across the board. You're gonna have um, typical sherry notes, which is a little bit of nuttiness, the spiciness, um, with a bit of sweet from the oak that you're normally getting because, I mean, there's still oak casks that they come from. Sometimes a very heavily uh, sherry and a, a, a very sweet, sometimes it'll it'll come on very thick and you'll actually, you know, almost syrupy in your mouth type thing. Um, the Macallan 17 Fine Oak, which we'll get on in later episodes, is uh, you know a mix of ex-bourbon casks as well as sherry and it's just got this perfect round flavor, but that's a little bit more advanced. Uh, moving on, we have the Glen Fittich, the greatest distillery in the world. They claim to be the number one most sold single malt, and I believe it because their notes are just so friendly to beginners and people of 
all sorts. Um, typical glenfiddich distillate, the actual distillate that they put into the barrels before they age them ever, um, has tons of notes of pear, tree fruit, you just got apples, you've got just super friendly notes of fruit and a little bit of floral that you can just totally identify with it. People just happen to love. And all of the flavors are usually really easily recognizable. So it's not like, oh, is that pear or is that orange? It's more like, oh, that's definitely a tart granny apple, you know? Um, so it's it's very easy, very welcoming. All of these are, are great beginner scotches to start off with. And that's why Glenfiddich is the best. Did we say that? Is what? That is that I I don't I don't remember that uh, <laughs> Japanese and Balvenie they are the best maybe potentially in there what do you think region which ones do you think are the best leave a comment down below are you pointing to the the upside down comments